What's up guys? So today we're gonna make flux using a recipe I found on the internet that uses rubbing alcohol and pine sap. Check this out. Here you can see two different pine saps that I bought just off of Amazon that are supposed to be debris free. I put each brand of pine sap into a different cup to mix it with the rubbing alcohol. This pine sap was practically impossible to get out. I took a spudger and just sat there and tried to scrape it out of its container, which it ultimately made a mess everywhere. And boom, all over my desk. So I believe it said that there was a ratio to do, but I just tried to make sure that the resin was completely submerged. I tried stirring it up here to get it to dissolve, but then I realized that's not going to happen too quick. So from there, I saran wrapped the cups, both of them, and left them out for actually like a week. I only had to do do it overnight to get it to dissolve, but I went ahead and did a week because, you know, I worked during the week and all that mess. So there you have it. Both cups are ready to sit and dissolve the sap. Okay, here we are a week later. So what you do is put a filter, a coffee filter, over another cup and the coffee filter is used to get out any debris that might still be sitting in the now flux. It's a liquid flux. So pour both of them in there and let them slow drip. The thing I thought that found odd was the sap was supposed to be debris free so why would this step matter? But did it anyways and there it is dripping away. So here I am taking a funnel to fill up the uh, dispenser with one of the batches of flux I made. I'm surprised actually how much it made um, I almost made a full bottle out of it, and I didn't think I used that much, but there's one being filled. And with the other one, I did something a little interesting, we'll say. You'll see here in a minute. But uh, it's pretty fun and a bad idea. So I really wanted a paste flux. <laughs> I did not want to make a liquid flux, because I never really had a very good experience using liquid fluxes. So I got the bright idea to, like, hey, you know what, this is a dumb idea. Let's make it dumber and just mix a bunch of Vaseline into it. Yeah, it didn't dissolve, like at all. Um, I tried a lot of weird stuff to try to get it to dissolve. I tried blasting it with a heat gun. Didn't work. So what I ended up doing was just taking... So you, you'll see it in a bit. <laughs> but Yeah, I don't want to spoil it. You'll see it in a bit. I tried to mix it. it. Didn't work. But I still use it anyway. So the first one I used was the liquid flux that I didn't mix with a uh, the Vaseline. And what you'll notice here is the rubbing alcohol portion of it evaporates <clears throat> really quickly. And, you know, that's not much different from regular liquid flux, at least the ones I have um, from my experience, that they just evaporate really quick, which is kind of why I don't like to use them. But uh, as you see here, it kind of didn't really work that well. It does look like I got a little bit too much solder on the pads when I was tinning them. But, uh, it, you know, it is soldered, but, um, doesn't look good. So what you'll see here is I can't stand that. So I touch it up and, uh, <laughs> if you can see there, <laughs> oh yeah, the, the smell, <laughs> the smell of the rubbing alcohol is just very strong. It practically killed me, but, uh, I still managed to touch it up and do it anyways, but it looks like I'm starting to question life a little bit. So what I ended up doing was just taking a hunk of the Vaseline that was sitting in the bottom of the cup and just slapped it on the board. I figured, well, you know, I kind of started up in there. Maybe some of those little properties mixed in with the Vaseline and might work. But no, it was basically just soldering with a runny Vaseline. It didn't really do a whole lot. It seemed like the uh, flux already in the solder core. Probably did most of the heavy, heavy lifting in um, probably both of these situations. And uh, you'll see here in a second that, yep, it's chasing the iron and not really doing what I wanted to do. I was trying to clean up those joints a little bit. But <laughs> I ended up just saying, screw it, squirting it with the uh, liquid flux just to try to get it done. So at this point, my whole room smells like crap and I'm just totally defeated and lungs are burning so I'm like screw it I'll just go on ahead and slap the straight pine sap right on the board and um <laughs> so this pine sap was actually kind of like an instance thing too so 
now my whole room smells like, you know, rubbing alcohol that's evaporated into the air and straight pine. So a really great combination. Oddly enough, it actually didn't really work that bad. Um, the only consequence was, you know, my uh, soldering mat being completely sticky with the uh, tackiness of the resin. My tweezers practically stuck together. It, it was a total mess, and I figured this would be a great time to whip out the old flux remover again. Maybe it would eat it away, and it, it did. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, it actually produced not a bad soldering joint, despite all the fucking filth all over the board. I'm voiceovering this at my editing rig right here because the audio was completely like destroyed. I don't know what went on. I was trying to test out these lavalier mics. The first one I got, it would only record in mono. There was an adapter for it. And when using that adapter, just completely... I'll let you listen to it right here. <coughs> Sorry, I had to get air for a second. Yeah, it's Holy pretty shit. bad, so totally Holy unusable. I tried to use audio restoration to make it work, and it didn't work. I hope you enjoyed this video. I got a new one I'm working on over here. It's uh, a server I'm building. It's pretty cool. I've been recording the uh, log of me building it. Um, ran into some issues on that too, of course, with compatibility. It's, it hasn't been tested yet. Probably know it doesn't work. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.